Record. Okay, so I'm recording now. Okay, so I've got this, um, I mean, uh, wonderful, wonderful um, question or comment. Um, is the ego required? Does it have a purpose? Um, why was the ego created? Incredible. Uh, the purpose of the ego, is it even necessary? So this is, this is my take on it, my view on it. Anyway, uh, you could say my personal view on it. So, and it was talking, you know, the, the Garden of Eden and the, the fall um, as well was mentioned in what I just heard and what it was heard. And um, okay, so I just would like to recount some of my, um, uh, one of my spiritual experiences. Uh, I met a teacher of enlightenment um, uh, who did a practice which was the observer witnesser. And I'd been doing that practice and uh, of being the observer of thoughts, observer of all perception. And I'd got to a place where there seemed to be an observer, but there was, a, it was still dualistic. There was still some sense of separation. So I explained it to the teacher and he asked me, well, what's observing that? What's behind that? You could go to the witnesser of that. And the whole, um, now I'm reporting it. I mean, anyone who's at an advanced level of consciousness will know that languaging, um, you cannot really speak of these things. But anyway, I'll have to use languaging and it will be, it will be incorrect. But um, there, was a, there was a me and there was a teacher speaking. And in the next instant after he said, well, what's witnessing that where well, you've got to, um, there was no world, there was no me, there was no thought. It was an infinite light infinite light and love at an intensity beyond anything and the um, the incredibleness of the light and love was at a, and the course does actually I always talk about the course because it says imagine the happiest moment you had in your life and times it by a hundred and a hundred again and that would only be a glimpse and that's the experience um, I had no world no time no thought no contrast no me or you no world no colors light and love uh, on another dimension, shall we say, or at a level of intensity uh, uh, bordering on the infinite. So darkness, darkness and duality does not exist, uh, not even time or, or color. So, uh, and then, I mean, it, I mean, to say this, it sounds ridiculous, but then there seemed to be a thought and something identified with the thought. And one was back in, it seemed like the experience was, there was one was back in the world, but now in a state of ecstasy and beingness and bliss. But there was a perception going on. There were trees and there was the person and the, wor the words were understood, like you can leave now, it's done, the teacher said. And there was just ecstasy and un un unfolding that occurred, um, you know, uh, th 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 that seemed to have a divine flow. And then later on, because it was a long time ago, my ego came back. There was the identification with thoughts. The world became dimmer and darker. The perception of time um, arose. So here's my thing. Um, and and uh, you know, this is just my view. Um, is the ego necessary? And is, is the ego practical? Is it useful? Does it serve a purpose? And here's my take on it. So, um, I think the, the course, because uh, I only do the lessons, I haven't done the text in the course, but um, you know, God did not create this world and so it's not real. It talks in the course about oneness and then sometimes it talks about something beyond this world or possibly that the world is an illusion or a dream. So it seems obvious to me that, um, and the course talks about the collective, you know, the collect you know, like a bunch of egos sharing a dream um, that there is such a thing as a world and that there is such a thing as separation and, and the different aspects of fear, fear, guilt, shame, anger. So, um, so you could say on one level, this world where identification occurs and the birth of a separated perception um, occurs and a, and a collective birth of collective separation seems to occur in kind of a shared collective illusion is, um, is just what seems to happen. But you know, if, if God, is, let's say if God is infinite light and love beyond this world, the, the, um, the, the infinity of love and light, 
would be so incredible, of course, there would be no world in that, in, in that experience. So for identification and the first levels of oneness, ecstasy, bliss, timelessness, and oneness, even oneness is, is still in this world where there seems to be no sense of separation in the collective um, for one's spiritual seekers, shall we say, even the word one, a certain implies separation. So there is divine flow that, that is experienced for that those high states of spiritual awareness, shall we call it. So um, it's an illuminated, it's an illuminated state. Uh, so is the ego necessary? And I'm going to talk, it, it depends where the, um, I would say no, actually the ego is not necessary. I mean, I would say on a certain level, I could say that God is infinite light and love beyond this world, but then this, you know, you could say a dream has happened, that there is identification and the experience of a separated sense of self and others that seem to also have a separated sense. And there seems to be communication in time and space um, with um, these, you know, there's seemingly me speaking to seeming others in a shared collective um, seeming reality. So that could be, but at a very high level of dissolve, dissolving of the ego, one witnesses that it's actually the divine. So I've spoken to many spiritual seekers and when they're in these illuminated states, you know, the sense of separated self starts to dissolve into, and they, experience, they report something called divine flow, where everything that's needed just shows up in the, you could call it the holy instant in the eternal now. There's a divine flow and it seems like the universe is taken care of. There's no need to think, no need to go into the future or the past, no need to be a separated self. Everything is just beautifully witnessed as it, as it shows up in those. And then they come back into their thinkingness and they have a higher feeling of separation. And it seems like everything starts to become worse. There seems to be more fear, more limiting things arising. And uh, the idea arises, of course, as one drops into those lower states that the ego is necessary. I would call the ego uh, fear and the need to control and, and think of things to solve certain solutions. Like if I think more, this, this little bit of fear and anxiety around money is actually quite useful. Let me use my head to really think this out uh, about what I need to do. But that for me is, an, is a dropping in, in the connection to, to the higher levels of consciousness to the more div divine aspects of God consciousness. And so what happens is actually what shows up in perception usually is even worse than when one was in more illuminated states of divine flow. So things seem to be going wrong that show up in perception. And one, if one goes into extreme fear or guilt or shame, and one is now thinking and feeling very separated, you know, we know this from 12 step groups and those who suffer from addiction you know, one's life seems to be showing up to being being lost. One goes into seeming suicidal thoughts. And so if the ego was cut off from the light totally, one can see that the body, I mean, the, or the thoughts would orchestrate the death of the seeming feeling of a body being separated in thoughts. So how, how you, well, you know, it's the illumination of the light which actually orchestrates uh, positive things seem to show up in experience. It's not actually the dominance. You could say when there's more light, something is saying, to, something seems to show up intuitively, like take your vitamins, take your vitamin C and make sure, uh, make sure you put, you put your money in that investment. And that I wouldn't say is the ego. Now that the light is illuminating what's left of the ego, intuitions and orchestrations start to occur from the divine level, but it wasn't actually the ego, because if you take, reduce that light of the divine, actually things get worse and worse. So that's my take. I'm sure that, I mean, it's a thing where I'm sure people could debate, but actually think that if I had hardly any ego, actually things would be very, very miraculous in flow. So I don't actually see the ego as being useful. Um, and I'm gonna stop there.